Rising costs didn't deter shoppers from flocking to stores over the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. According to a survey by the National Retail Federation, a record number of holiday shoppers hunted for deals, both in person and online, from Thanksgiving through Cyber Monday. But are people spending, and if so, how much? We sent reporter Sarah Allen out to local stores to get an early perspective on holiday shopping. I like 60s, 70s music. I like 80s music. Golden Valley resident Mark Johnson Pencook. One of my favorite album covers. Is an avid record collector. I've collected records since I was 11 years old, probably. It is 1075. Every couple of weeks, you'll find him looking to add to his collection at Fly Vintage and Vinyl in Robbinsdale. It's not huge, but it's always has something I'm looking for. <laughs> Small business owners are under increasing pressure to attract buyers to their stores and away from large online sellers and big retail stores. I think if you talk to a lot of small businesses, you'll hear a lot of places are saying they're 20 to 30 percent down this year. Krista Kalk owns Minnesota Makers. We often say this is the ultimate Minnesota jewelry gift. It's called a Minnesota. The store owner appreciates the attention Small Business Saturday gave to her store. It's the day where everybody comes out to support small business. Big box stores win the game in a lot of ways and so it gives us all a chance to highlight what we have and to highlight the 150 small businesses we have in this one location. Saturday's Shop Local was the busiest shopping day here at Minnesota Makers in terms of sales and foot traffic. Going forward each Saturday until Christmas is also expected to be busy. The one in between. The latest numbers from the National Retail Federation say the overall holiday shopping season is on track to meet its forecast. Small businesses are hoping that their bottom line will reflect that positive news too. 2022 has been a little quieter, but we're so appreciative of the people that come out and support us. I just love the culture that is planted here with this type of store. It, it adds, you know, more color to the uh, local community. In Robbinsdale, Sarah Allen, CCX News. Meanwhile, a local business expert says the magic word to describe the holiday shopping season is uncertainty. Professor George John with the University of Minnesota's Carlson School of Management says retailers are having to navigate very challenging times due to inflation. During the pandemic, the bottom 50 percentile of our income population did OK because of all the transfer payments. That money's running out. You see that in the in the um, credit card debt just growing astronomically. So those folks are getting stretched because those are the people who get hit most by food prices, energy prices, all of the regular day to day stuff. While projections this year may show holiday retail sales going up by six to seven percent, Professor John says that's being washed away by inflation and retailers can only offer so many deals without losing money. For the small retailer on Northwest Suburban Main Street, John says they're going to have to rely on their most loyal customers. Every small retailer has to depend on their unique appeal to their unique set of customers. It's not going to be the 80 percent of the people that that matter. It's the few people that come into your store. So if you know your customers and your products are tailored to your customers and your deals are tailored to those people, you'll do OK. And Professor John says it's a challenge for big box retailers, too. He says retailers like Target and Walmart that had strong sales during the pandemic because they were allowed to stay open are also now feeling the pinch. A class at Park Center High School is getting kids out of the classroom and back into nature. Jason Malello has more in today's School Spotlight. Spending a night in the woods. This is my opportunity to try out new things. Learning to make fire. You never know what situations you could be in. There's a lot of skill sets that can help you out. And rolling a huge snowball down a hill because why not? What was that? The smiles on their faces haven't quit since we got here. This is Park Center High School's outdoor adventure class. Students recently spent time at Baker Park Reserve. They've been running around the woods, finding geocaching, um, learning prehistoric skills. Uh, we did shelter building with them, and today we're going to do some uh, fire making. They cook their own dinner. They've been cleaning, doing everything on their own. Park Center teacher Chris Goodwagen teaches five outdoor adventure classes every school year, and he starts with a simple rule, no phones. We're going to disconnect from technology, and we're going to go out and we're going to use a map and compass, and you guys are going to learn a new skill that 
you might use later on in life. And just leaving the virtual world and the classroom and driving less than an hour from school can be therapeutic for the kids. It's like refresh and like calm and peaceful because you know we've been stuck in like the cities so like being around nature again is pretty refreshing. Most in school we just stay on screens and chase grades. We get to learn academic stuff like math and reading but we don't get to chase dreams. In Maple Plain, Jason Malillo, CCX News. The trip to Baker Park Reserve was one of three funded by a grant from Wilderness Inquiry to Park Center High School. And if the day is gray and gloomy outside, step inside the Plymouth Community Center for an exhibit of abstract art that is as colorful as it is interesting. A lot of um, people that might have varying taste and artwork have come into the space and they've really enjoyed it. And I feel they they all see a, a little something different when they're looking at his work. The paintings are by local artist Richard Middlestadt. He works with acrylic paints, creating abstract images that he hopes will help people temporarily escape from reality. He wants people to take, um, take themselves to another dimension. As you can see, a lot of them are, um, you know, combined a lot of abstract shapes, colors are really bright. Um, there's a lot to look at with the eyes. The show runs through December 8th, and we will leave you with a sneak peek of some of his paintings. We had some great high school football in the northwest suburbs this fall. We've consulted with local coaches to name the CCX all area teams. You can check our website ccxmedia.org to see the offense. Here's the all area defense. We'll start our CCX all area defense up front with a talented group of linemen. Number 11 Jackson Howard of Cooper played some defensive end and linebacker along with tight end for the Hawks. The first team All-Metro pick had 119 total tackles with one interception. The Hawks team MVP will play for LSU. Number one, Caden Cook of Park Center was the Pirates defensive MVP. Defensive end Cook had 42 tackles with nine tackles for loss and eight sacks. The All-Twin City Green pick is getting some D1 looks. Number 45, Deshaun Ricks of Osseo had a strong senior season. Ricks had 75 tackles, 15 tackles for loss, and seven and a half sacks while earning all Metro Maroon North honors. Ricks was the Orioles Defensive Player of the Year. Number 13 Langdon College of Armstrong is a rangy junior who created big plays for the Falcons. College had 68 tackles with nine sacks. He was District Defensive Lineman of the Year in the Suburban Blue. Number 85, Bryce Hawthorne, was Mr. Versatility for Osseo. Hawthorne played six positions at various times, including defensive tackle and end. The South Dakota State commit was a two-time All-Metro Maroon North pick and will play in the Minnesota All-Star game. Our linebackers include number 5, Tanner Albeck of Maple Grove. The second team All-Metro pick entered the prep bowl with a team-high 96 tackles, including 16 tackles for loss three sacks and two block kicks. Number 51, Chase Ullum of Wyzetta had a superb senior season. The All-Star Game selection had 105 total tackles, seven tackles for loss and four sacks while earning all Metro Gold North honors. Number five, Drew Kempel of Armstrong was district defensive MVP in the Suburban Blue. He had 85 tackles with one interception and also excelled as a tight end fullback. Number 27, Ben Bremer of Champlain Park was a two-time all-district pick in the Metro Maroon North. Bremer had 39 tackles, six tackles for loss, and three interceptions for the Rebels, including this one returned for a TD. Touchdown, Champlain Park! Number six, Emmanuel Carmo of Cooper rounds out our linebackers. The super sophomore earned all suburban blue honors, recording 74 tackles with two sacks and an interception. He's earning plenty of college interest already. Our defensive backs include number three, Jackson Powers of Maple Grove. The cornerback leads the Crimson with four interceptions and plays the run well too. He'll be a preferred walk-on with the Gophers. Number one, Cordell Wilson of Armstrong is another great corner. 
The all-suburban blue pick had 35 tackles and two interceptions in helping the Falcons to the state tournament. All-star game selection Wilson will play for Western Illinois. Number one, Nate Miller was Breck's team MVP. The junior had 110 tackles with two forced fumbles and an interception, while also catching 40 passes on offense. Number 12, Jacob Anderson bounced back from an injury to help lead Maple Grove to the prep bowl. Coming into the title game, Anderson had 35 tackles with three interceptions and a fumble return for a score. He's also a big factor at wide receiver. Rounding out the defense is punter Elliott Hitter of Benilde St. Margaret's. Hitter averaged 41 yards per punt for the Red Knights and also had touchbacks on 93% of his kickoffs. He excelled as a kicker and wide receiver too and will play for St. Thomas. A special group, the CCX All Area Defense for Football. These guys also had good seasons, the honorable mention picks for defense.